Hey, it's Miguel and Michael on Music Mayhem and Madness, and today's show is going to be a little bit different. We're not going to be focusing on an artist. We're going to be focusing on something that's very close to... Hey, that's not the norm, guys. What's not the norm? Well, no, 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 an artist. We usually have an artist. I, I think we should just have a complimentary artist that sits in the background today, and I choose Picasso. <laughs> Apparently he likes party bit. Hey, did he? Yeah, whenever he ran out of ideas, he got a new girlfriend. He reckoned it always had to be in that honeymoon period. Wow, that would be stimulating to the mind, wouldn't it? I've got a musical story about <laughs> Picasso, actually. What's that? Well, when Paul McCartney... Well, actually, Dustin Hoffman was in a movie called Papillon. Oh, is it? Steve yeah. McQueen. Isn't Papillon. That Great that's movie. That's watch it. Watch it. The prison? Wasn't that the yeah, prison? Yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah, Papillon means butterfly Papillon. in French. Yes, that's yeah. right. And anyway... Paul McCartney was on holidays in the Caribbean and they were filming it and he went over there to, on the film set and he sat with Dustin and they had lunch. And Dustin Hoffman said, hey, Paul, you're such a good songwriter. Did you know that Picasso died last night? And could you write a song about that at all? And Paul McCartney said, I'll give it a yo. And he came out with a song called Picasso's Last Stand. And it's a fucking ripper. Wow. I have to you should listen to it. You, and, and... and no. Dustin Hoffman says it's one of the highlights of his life. Cool. Wow. Did not know that. Words of wisdom from Fred. Yeah, Fred is, again. Fred is making sense today. Is, is he all right? I don't know. Maybe he's some, something. Something in his water. <laughs> no, it's the green hat. Oh. <laughs> oh, the new canvas hat. Yeah, canvas hat. Well, look, today's <laughs> show, <laughs> thanks for the little interlude there, Fred. Let's put today's show is going to be about something that both Michael and I hold very dear to our hearts, which are... Guitars. Guitars. And <laughs> specifically... Miguel's guitars. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. Specifically Les Paul's. Yeah. And dri dr drilling down even further, the Deluxe. The Deluxe. The, the Les Paul Deluxes. Yep. Um, I mean, there's a lot of very, very famous guitarists. I mean, uh, Thin Lizzy. Steve, was it Gorham from... Uh, yeah, Scott Gorham. Scott Gorham from Thin Lizzy yeah, was one of the... Yeah, he played mini humbuckers, didn't he? Yeah, he was one of the... Yeah, I was guys. actually trying to think, who, no one plays mini humbuckers. No, no, and the guy from well. Boston, um, he played oh, he? he played mini humbuckers. Okay. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Michael Videlli, he plays mini humbuckers. And you've been playing... Who? No, I haven't heard of you either. <laughs> <laughs> you've been playing minis for how long? Uh, and more importantly, why? Because when I bought my guitar... Um, I wanted a Les Paul, normal one, and um, the only one I could afford, that was the second-hand one came in, which is mine, which is not this one, but it's similar. Uh, it's a Sunburst. And I had 1400 bucks, and um, I couldn't buy any of them. So, and one came in to Cosmic, which is where Rick, who I've been playing, he's been playing drums, We've been playing together. He's a drummer. He has a drum shop there. And I didn't know him at the time. Uh, and someone traded in a Les Paul Deluxe and owed him 1400 bucks. So, what year was this? 91. And so, I someone said, Oh, Rick's traded one in because I was a bit, I was kind of a bit cut, you know, because I, I was working at Rotten Nest Island, I was peeling prawns and um, which I think I mentioned one of the other things potatoes and washing dishes and all that till I got some money to buy a Les Paul <laughs> and went over to buy the guitar and uh, I couldn't afford one. And someone said, oh, Rick's just traded one in on a drum kit and it was 1400 bucks, so it ended up being mine and I, I was kind of disappointed, <laughs> to be honest, because they look funny. They look small. They are. You know, I mean, I'm used to it now, but I'd never seen one before. So it was kind of like, yay, but it was a bit... Flat. But anyway, it's been it was a blessing because um, it's a big part Same of Same as most of your girlfriends, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I was like looking at it and I was like, oh, it still says Les Paul on it. And it's a Gibson. So I was going, oh, still, because like headstock used to mean a lot. It doesn't mean anything to me now, to be honest. I actually make a point if someone gives me a guitar, I'm not looking at the headstock because it colours your opinion straight away. Wow. Um, so I don't do that. But yeah, so anyway, so I ended up with this, this guitar. And um, I love it. You know, it's really, it's really cool. And I actually, uh, mine came with the Seymour Duncan Seymourized threes in it. Um, so I didn't, I didn't get it with the uh, original pickups. Um, and I'm really glad for that too because uh, I've got a new, new one, 
And the first thing I did was... Pull those pickups yeah, out. Yeah. Because I'm just used to them. I mean, they're quite high output. Yeah, they are. And I've got a... Um, a, a split, so I've taken. You're taking two knobs out. These knobs, switches I put out. switches so I can yeah. switch them. So I'll, I'll bring my guitar. Do another you know time. that but, story you just said about the disappointment of getting a deluxe? Yeah, no, it was really it's like a. It was like a, you know, what do you call it? Bittersweet. Well, I'm going. I'm going to share <laughs> something with you that I don't think I've ever said to anybody in my life. When when I was uh, when I was young, uh, I was working uh, on Hay Street selling newspapers. Like um, got daily news. No, no, no. Oh. The Sunday Independent. This is oh. this is this is going back. Bob Mormel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is going back a long time ago. Yeah. And I would save all my money up, and I was earning between twenty five and thirty dollars a night working. That's good money. Oh, well, I would rather have been selling the Sunday Times at the time because there was lots more people buying the Sunday Times yeah. than the Sunday Independent. But True. you got a gig, you got a gig, right? Remember how many newspapers we had? <sighs> Saturday's worst. The Western Mail. The weekend, what was it called? The West we Australian? had about five or six newspapers in Perth. Yeah, and they were all big like that. Like telephone books. Yeah. Anyhow, I was um, I, I was working. I was 13 or 14 at the time. Mm. And I saved every penny. And my mum said to me, I'll match you a dollar for dollar. Um, on whatever deal. you save up to go and buy a Les Paul. And I was at that stage, I was big into Kiss. Like... Oh. Ace Freely was... The, Is that the three pickup? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ace Freely. <laughs> and the way he would do this sort of... Sh- and Lark and Smoke would come out of his pickups and yeah. stuff like that. Anyway, I remember I end up, get, get, end up getting about six or seven hundred bucks. And I went into Clef Music. Oh, in town? In town. High Street? Yeah. In, yeah, in, or Murray Street. Uh, Murray, Street. Street. Murray yeah, Street, yeah, Murray Street. Yeah. Yeah. Top of Murray Street going towards West Perth. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, there was this... Um, uh, well, that was next to... 78s? Yeah, that? yeah, it's a bit further up from 78s. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 just a bit further yeah, up. Yeah. And I remember walking in there and there was this natural, like oh. a Les Paul, like natural wood colour, yeah. right, with just full-size, PAF-size pickups. Yeah. Right? And then there was this guitar. Yeah. That I bought in 84, 83, and um, there was a next to it. And that was, this was $1,265 brand new. Yeah, back in eighty three or eighty four, and the one, the natural one next to it was uh, maybe a hundred dollars more expensive, and I, oh. I because it was not the mini humbuckers, it was the full size. Yeah, one. And, but I didn't like the color, but my mum mm. wouldn't pay any more than what I. Oh, s- but you know what's interesting? You know why they don't paint them? Because the ones that they reckon have got the nicest looking wood, they do a stain. Ah, for more natural. Right, so when they have the gold tops and the black beauties and all that. They're, um, yeah, they generally, I mean, it doesn't mean it's bad wood. It's just, it's aesthetically not as yeah. pleasing to the eye. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, that's how it is. I mean, you know, most, yeah, not to say anything negative about these guitars, but that's just what happens. There's probably like, you know, under there, you don't know what's under there really. But, um, so look at the old paint. Has that got the same paint? Uh, well, th- actually, that's another story altogether. This is oh. this is this is a lot newer version of that same guitar. Yeah, yeah. It's but anyway, so yeah. so the thing is, a little bit like yourself, uh, it's a bit yeah. of sweet. I'm getting a deluxe, not one with the big thick paths like yeah. Alex Freely had at the time. Yeah. Right? But in hindsight, yeah, I mean, I, I've been using that guitar since back then. I've bought and sold lots of guitars in my lifetime. That one's remained with me. Yeah. And I use that one as my main guitar. When I'm recording with my band Forest in the studio, yeah, so we could. It's uh, it's it's gorgeous. It's very similar to mine. Mine's a, this is a '81, is it? It is, yeah. yeah. Um, this is an '80, isn't it? Mine's an '80, and um, I think those two years, the necks were pretty thin. They are, yeah. Well, when I say thin, not they're not like the hockey stick, you know, D shape or whatever. What do they call this? A C shape? Or I think it's a C shape. Yeah. yeah. So this is a bit. Th- I think it's. I would say probably. Smidge thinner than mine, but very, very, very. It's the closest one I've ever seen to mine, like as far as the actual specs and stuff. Right. It's really. Yeah. So, so today's show, what we want to do, and sorry to give you the backstory, but I just wanted to give you some idea about where we're coming from with this. Because a few weeks ago, a good friend of mine, Louis Kappa, uh, from Sound Center in Morley, was selling this. And um, I saw it come up for sale, and I rang him up and said, Mate, I, uh, I'd like to come have a look at your guitar. I went and had a look at it and plugged it in and played it and immediately, immediately fell in love. That's with it. a peach, mate. It is absolutely stunning. And so this 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 particular session today is going to be a little bit on Les Pauls, but 
a bit more on what the old guitar, which is 43 years of age, how that compares to a guitar which is modern. This is only a 2021, so this is only three years old. Uh, and what the difference is, I'm going to let the maestro himself talk a little bit about the play, the when sound, the feel, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and what do you think? You know that the main yeah. differences are between. I just got a text. He's about half an hour away. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, and while we're waiting, while we're waiting, um, yeah. so you know, so you know, well, tell me what it is about. You know, what do you look for in a, in well, a guitar, and what's first, the difference between these two? I don't know. First thing I do is play, play a chord and see if it sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Sounds good to me. I mean, that's one of the things like in guitar shops, um, I reckon it's really important to have, they should have a kid in there and his job is just tune all the guitars like three times a day. So when someone comes in and plays the guitars in tune, because like if you, if you go and play guitars, like, yeah, no, I don't like that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's pretty obvious, but it's a man sometimes you go to the shop and pick a guitar, but it's just not in tune. Um, man, I've been buying my yeah. guitars all wrong. <laughs> you bet you have. Um, how old are these strings? Uh, they're a bit old. They're probably about eight weeks, ten weeks. I mean, it's really it's warm. It's, it, I mean, it's set up great. Obviously, it hasn't been refretted because it's still got the um, the white tabs over the over the pink. over the frets. Yep. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's great. It's a great guitar. Um, hey, dude. I don't think I've ever used dude before. Hey, you. How high or how many notes can you change when you bend a string? Uh, it depends on what the gauge is. If they're, if they're light gauge, you can do bend probably two, two. Two, maybe two and a half. But generally, you probably wouldn't bend more than a, a whole tone. Yeah. So, and how far do you bend a string up to get two? Oh, uh, so... Let's say that's the note, and then two meaning two semitones or one whole tone. So one fret is a semitone. So you want to get from there to there to it. That's quite easy, do you know? So, but you can. But when you start going past that, you're probably going to break a string. So safe. Occasionally, what I'll do though, if I'm going like this, that, I'll, 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 yeah. take, I'll, I'll actually Another bend semitone. It. Just, yeah, so you go. So, so three semitones. And some people actually start it with two tones up and then bend down. Oh, yeah, of course. Like that. And, and they're, that's a beautiful emphasizing in your music. Yeah. And what I've noticed about Les Pauls is that they seem so thick and creamy when you do it on the. Yeah, I mean, we're just using, well, I am anyway. My setup today is just clean, so we're just kind of listening to the natural sound of the guitar. That Les Pauls, well, all guitars, but Les Pauls have a particular sound when they're overdriven. Rock and roll, it's the sound of rock and roll, mate. Mate. So, mate. 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 So what I've That's noticed what we say in Australia. Away is that um, there's a three-piece neck. So what, what they do... Um, so normally, or originally, the guitar would have a one one piece neck because they have really old wood, which would be dried properly and it wouldn't bend. Um, yeah, <laughs> well, I was going there, but uh, so what they do, uh, what they were doing when they were finding necks were bending, was they cut the middle bit out and then turn it upside down so that the tension would balance Offset itself. Offset itself. Yeah. Okay. So you actually find these are really good necks. They don't. And that's um, a maple neck as well, yeah. the back, which is very unusual. Yeah, it's maple with a um, rosewood. rosewood fretboard. And, you know, they're pretty sturdy necks, you know. Um, my new one, I think it's a one-piece. Anyway, uh, so um, mahogany body and underneath the um, gold is a maple face, I believe. Well, you can start seeing the, the way it's peeling off at the back there. Yeah. And you can start seeing it's just starting to come through there. yeah. Yeah, um, so they're pretty heavy, like a big heavy like a piece of mahogany. It's like pretty serious. That'd be wood. a good five kilos. Probably, probably, pretty cool. And they've got the mini humbuckers in there. Uh, so I mean, this is just a great guitar. You know, it plays well. The um, the actions are 
good. It's not too high. It's not too low. It doesn't buzz. Plays really good for bridge pickup, both pickup. Although, see that? I would probably raise that. Would you? Yeah, because see, I got. Sorry, I would probably raise the uh, raise the that. tail one. Yeah, this one's really hot. It's quite a norm. I mean, it's not. You can. It's not like a hard and fast rule, but generally you probably have the bridge pick up just a bit louder or at least So maybe to, we could drop the drop Yeah, the drop maybe one. drop that one. Maybe drop that a bit because when you go from... There's a big jump. Oh, a big jump, big yeah. Jump, so do, do, it drops off there. Oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> so don't do anything to this guitar. It's actually set up beautifully. You had the volume down. Yeah, I know. Maybe I, I know now. Hang on, but still, having said that, that was my fault. Um, that's okay. Do, would you want to explain what happened just then? Yeah, what happened then was Miguel's guitar. No, what happened then was um, <laughs> I <laughs> I had the volume down on the pickup and thought, man, this isn't set up right. And I'm looking at it and it's like, it's about as high as you can get it. You can't get it any higher. I'm going, oh my God. Anyway, that was me. That was a Michael that, that's happened. And see, the reason he's saying that is because. These two um, volumes here, this volume here, controls. If I show you, if I if I do that, there's no noise. But as soon as I do that, that one there, that one controls. That one controls there. That one controls there. And if it's in the middle, you get both pickups playing. And what Michael did, he had the volume down on this one here, and that's why it was very very quiet. Yeah, and. That's nothing. You should see what I do at soundcheck. I've actually just lost my mind. I've got no sound. I've got no sound. No volume? And plugged the thing in. <laughs> <laughs> and how come musos... That's nothing. <laughs> how come musos can only count up to three? That's all you need. Oh, no, no. Well, four. No, no four. No, you One, come in. <laughs> no, four is silent. One, two, three. three. Yeah, because, yeah, I don't know. Is there, is this, is there like something that. to this? I like that. No, it's just I've noticed when people do sound checks, they go one, two, three, oh. one, two, three, oh. one, two, three. Oh, one, two, three. Check, it's, check, it's check, one, check. two. Yeah, check. And what's with check? Check, it's, check, check. Because this is what I've been taught. One, I go one, two, and then I go, eh, but anyway, I go one, you do one because it's got the lows. One, one, one. and t -t 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 two's got the t -t 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 -t. So the sound I can hear, you know, the top end, that t -t -t -t, and the one, That's exactly two. right. And I generally, uh, I'm, my voice is a bit barky, cuts through cuts through a crowd, uh, and so between 400 hertz and 800 hertz, which on a 31 band is kind of uh, five or 630, 500, 400, 800. I just dip them, yeah, and then my voice sounds a lot smoother. Yeah, I was kind of like that. Ah. Okay, ah. <laughs> so it's sort of like like this. And, uh, you know, I had to learn this to speak like this when I went to Europe because uh, a friend of mine said, you guys sound like ducks. Like, we, we can't talk like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah. And then so I said, low and, low and slow, Michael. Low and high. <laughs> That's so name, funny. My name is Michael. Gusti. Um, <laughs> talk like this, right? So anyway, I have to, like, EQ my voice when I travel uh, to the northern that hemisphere. That is the greatest story I it's think. True I've heard. I love <laughs> it. True. I love it. Um, I love so it. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so I hear that. Oh, what lies from yonder <laughs> window breaks? A little bit of Shakespeare. Right? <laughs> Unreal. Um, so 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 okay. What I'd like you to do now. There. So you've been through the the feel, the sounds. Yeah, the and feel. Like the I sounds. suppose what I'm doing is just is just coining myself with the guitar. It's very similar to mine. I know the kind of how. So if you feel. just play play something that you would normally play well, in a clean sound on your guitar, and when I do, I just try to hear the harmonics, whether the, the guitar's like humming, you know, it sounds like. Play the harmonics. Actually, that's an interesting thing, right? Harmonics, right? So the 12th fret where the double dots are, there, that's the centre of the string. Yes, there. Right? Yeah. So when you fret the um, the string, obviously it goes, it goes up, right, in 
the pitch goes up. Yeah. When you play the harmonic, which means your finger's the fret, um, if I go backwards, it'll go up. Wow. I've been, <laughs> I, I don't know why. But uh, feels like that Billy uh, Idol. <laughs> 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 why are And the harmonics, what are they? Why does it ring like that? Just on that uh, part of the string? Because they're, I think there's like a Pythagoras thing, but they're um, the, even divisions. The yeah, so you've of, got, of the neck length. So you got, that's half, and then that's half again. And then that one, I don't know why that one works. And that one that... Um, Where the wave intersects. It's a sine Where the wave. wave intersects. There you go. It's a sine wave. That's right. I didn't know that, but I just know where they are. But the one, I remember when um, Satriani came out with Surfing with the Alien, there's a song called Satch Boogie. Yeah. And he's got this unbelievable dive bomb that like, goes, like, that's just fucking yeah. sick. And that's on there. <laughs> like that. And everyone's going, how do you get that one? Like, that one. I mean, when your amp, when you like, And your abs are sorted. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's yeah. sick. That's why I don't have a whammy bar. Ever. Why? Because you break it. I just like to let go. <laughs> I just like... Videli, <laughs> And then you go to the motorbike. <laughs> yeah, no, I just, it's too much fun. So I just, I can't have one of them. Um, yeah. Even though Rob's invented a really cool one. Yeah, well, that I would, I would make an exception for that because there's so many other things to muck around on with that. Yeah. yeah. The robot guitar, hopefully we can get Rob back. back. Don't we chat with that. Okay, so now that you've given that a bit of a, a, a squeeze... Good. Okay, let's let's do the old swap a Rooney. Uh, yeah. Hey, your mum just sent a text to stop showing off. No. <laughs> Why would I, you do something like that? Oh, because uh, I told her I'd iron my shirt, and she's obviously watching. Welcome back, my little baby. All right. So what do we got here? All right. Straight away, heaps thicker neck. First impression. Um, that's not a bad thing, but it's different. I think it's a one-piece neck. It's a one-piece neck, which means that they're confident that yeah, that's a break. That's a good bend. bit. Good bit of wood. Well, that's because it's thicker, probably. Yeah, but I still I don't think they would um, give you a one-piece neck if it was going to bend. It's not necessarily about breaking; it's more about warping. You know, like the. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to bend, sort of, to warp that way or that way because you've got. But a you don't want it twisting. Yeah, if it's twisted, it's twisted. It's fuck. That's money. Steaming and refretting and bracing and all that shit. Yeah, uh, I went through a similar thing, <laughs> but I'm all right now. Are you sure? <laughs> I've seen. Have not seen you on the counter at butcher shop. Got my shop. eye on you, boy. <laughs> With a s slot in your head, and put money in. <laughs> no, that was another life. Oh. Um. Yeah, this is cool. Frets are higher. And that, well, obviously that one's older, so it's worn out. That's got the the white bits above the. Although, see this one, I wonder if they're just painted on. So those ones actually go over the top. Of that. It's like the enamel or whatever it is. Well, it does. Isn't the, it? The, the the binding has been actually hand cut. I, I, I think these are just. I think these are painted on. That's that um, kind of synthetic uh, ivory, ivory that, ah. that's on here, and so I think they've. I think they've just dabbed them. With paint, um, I think I don't know. I don't want to get in trouble with Gibson um, misrepresenting their product, but uh, and that's not even a bad thing because it doesn't freaking matter. Because as soon as you change the the, the, the fresh, it's not there anyway. Um, so that's more of an aesthetic thing. Um, so it's brighter, I'm guessing, because the strings in your yes, they are. And also, check out the uh, way of over Yeah, the, you've got the wrap. I've got the wrap. Yeah. Now, that's an interesting thing. See, most times with Gibsons, you go straight into the back of the tailstop here, and then you go over the bridge. Whereas mm. with that one, when I got it from Louis, he had actually yeah. wrapped it over the top of this of this bridge here. Yeah. And it, it, uh, it's actually easier to bend. And these are tens to... Do you reckon? A, yeah, I reckon it's easier to bend. These are tens, not nines as well. Well, I've, the reason I think guys do that, well, I'll tell you, I'll just 
so my guitar, I just put them straight through. And when I had first got it, I had my tailpiece on, on, no, on the on the wood, like like this one's very very low. Oh, it's flat uh, onto uh, the wood. Yeah, it's flat onto the wood. So the angle, um, the angle's very sharp when it's not wrapped around. You mean so, like that? Yeah, but see how yours is raised. Oh right? yeah, yeah. So yeah. what happens when it's flat? When it's flat, you, the angle's very tight, so you just pop strings all the time because you just cut Cause you, the, you, Yeah, because the angle's off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've raised mine probably a little higher than that one, and I don't break any strings. So what Louis done, he's, instead of raising a tailpiece, he's, he's got that extra height by wrapping them around, so he's sort of reduced that angle, yeah. which is a pretty cool idea, and it probably changes the tone, like... You probably, I don't know, you have to... But it feels it, easier to bend. Um, and easy, yeah, because and ten, it's got less tension. Less tension. But these are all, these are 10s as well, not 9s. This is 9 to 42. Yeah. They're 10 to 46s, which yeah. is the, the, the gauge of the strings. Yeah, so um, that's one of the other things. Um, if you are using heavier strings, um, when you raise that, you know, reduce that angle, yeah. the tension's less. So, I mean, I, I play 11s, as you know, and um, it feels similar to this. The only difference is I can feel that the string's thinner. Yes. Right, but the tension's not much less. What's the main reason you break a string? Age of the string. Oh, uh, bad technique. I oh, yeah, it's, uh, that's so true. I used to pop them all the time, hitting the guitar too hard. Um, getting a, a, a... The string's cut a groove into the saddles, and then they get a sharp edge on them. And when you're bending... It's just like a pair of tin snips. It'll eventually it'll just snap it. But what's interesting though is that the D string, which is this middle the one, first the first wound the, one. Yeah, the first wound one. It's actually the thinnest because the windings around the core and the core is actually thinner than the E. Now, often. That's a crazy thought. So right. that, I always found that was the first one to go. And what and what they mean by wound is that they actually got the main core of the string going through, and then there's another bit of wire going around it, they're wound strings. Yeah. And on most electric guitars, the E, the A and the D are wound. And on acoustic guitars, you'll get the G string, which is yeah, also wound. a wound string as well, you know? Have you ever put a wound G on? No. It's so hard to bend. I really? Tried, yeah, I tried it once and uh, yeah, you're just you're bending and it just doesn't get there. Oh, is the phone? I oh, just not uh, so, yeah, anyway, I, I, th I mean, I might be slightly off with the, the thinnest, but it's it's very thin. Yeah. And once once you've... Uh, they break a lot, the Ds. Yeah, so I'll change my strings every gig so I don't break them. And how come when you're watching a concert and the dude comes up to do his lead break and he's gone for it and then strings start fucking going off all over the place, yet he still keeps on playing and it sounds like the real thing. How do they do that? Um, well, the thing is, is the advantage of that is that <clears throat> the guitar goes flat, right? So you can always bend up. up. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not so bad on a fixed neck, on a fixed yeah. bridge guitar like a Les Paul. If you've got a Floyd Rose. If you got, if you, even if you've got a, 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 a Stratocaster that's got the tram a little float. Yeah, floating. floating you're, bridge, you're, yeah. It's, it's, it's all over Red Rose. But it depends yeah, on the Yeah, but you right. don't get a concert and you see the guy break a string and say, Hey, Eric, I can't play my lead now because I've broken a string. Well, I asked that to Stevie Ray Vaughan. I saw a great video clip where he actually, well, he was going off. String yeah. break, he just kept on kept going. going. Yeah. And unless you were, unless you'd seen him break the string, you wouldn't have heard it. No yeah, way. well, I think the thing, the first thing that goes through your Yeah, mind that's is, what I'm getting at. Yeah. So how how does he make it all sound like he hasn't well, broken a string? He'll compensate. He'll play that, that particular note. You just go, down. you just go, I've only got to get through this song. There's another guitar over there. Yeah. Don't freak out. Fake it till you make it. <laughs> right? Don't go for anything too. You know where it is hard um, is if it's a if it's a uh, if you're soloing it's easy. Yeah, right? cool. yeah, you just, yeah, you just yeah. work around it. Yeah, but if you've got to play um, like a, a particular set riff. piece or something a like, riff. oh, you know, if you had to play, it, what's that? Right, you're if never going to do if that. If I break an A string, you're yeah, never right? going to do it. Oh, it's not going to happen. Never going to so do it. So then you just then you just tell a joke and change guitars. Okay, and you know, don't, don't fake it. <laughs> don't, don't pretend you didn't do it. Yeah, You're better off saying, pop, if ah, yeah. you know what, this is the, one of the hazards yeah. of being alive. Hey, guys, hey, guys, hey, guys. 
Les Paul is very interesting and all that kind of stuff, and I really like listening to it. But now it's time for the show to come to a close, and as we go, we're going to say Fretless's words of wisdom. Drawn on the many, many different lyrics out there from different artists from all over the world. And today's gospel comes from Cat Stevens, from the book of T for the Telemay. From the chapter, Father and Sam. <laughs> and, and it goes along these lines. I was once like you are now And I know that it's not easy to be calm When you found something going on But take your time, think a lot But think of everything you've got for you Still be here tomorrow, but your dreams may not. Wow. That's beautiful, guys. Going out on such a lovely note calms the nerves, soothes the soul. Let's wish everybody. A happy, calm soul, whatever. Goodbye.